Baritones, what's up, y'all? I hope y'all are well out there. Like, I truly do. If you don't know who I am, I'm gonna tell you who I am right now. I am Jaren. I am a voice teacher, speech trainer, and the founder and owner of this incredible studio, the Jaren M. LeGuerre Studio. So, I'm gonna be fully honest. I actually recorded this footage for this particular video on another day and then tried to edit it recently and discovered that my mic was not working correctly. So, I cannot use any of the footage that I had. So, I had to sit down and re record all this footage now for you all. But I wanted to make sure I got to this video because I know you all have requested this video. So, I'm excited to get into this wonderful, wonderful performance. But before I do that, let me explain how these videos work here on this channel. So this is March 1 analysis and not a reaction. So I'm gonna start and stop a lot while the video was going and talk about things in the moment as they happen or right after they happen. So if you don't like starting and stopping during videos and things like that, then go on to another video. But if you don't mind that kind of thing, then stick around because this is a channel and the video for you. So y'all, let's get into this voice analysis of Miss Whitney Houston singing I Love You Porgy from Porgy and Bess and I Am Telling You from Dreamgirls and I I have nothing. She had that nice chesty sign and it went up to that head voice. Porgy. She is so good at that maneuvering of transitions or intentional register manipulation or intentional vocal fold body cover manipulation. She is so good at that. So good. Don't let them Let them handle me. You hear that aspirate offset or like kind of like that breath that kind of ends her phrases sometimes. She does it pretty often. Handle me. It's kind of like a aspirate offset breath thing that she does uh, uh, when she ends phrases sometimes. She doesn't do it in every phrase, but kind of often she does that kind of thing. Another person who kind of does that sometimes is Michael Jackson. Sometimes he kind of does like they both kind of have that aspirate breath at the end of some of their phrases. And they're both great singers, so hey, maybe there's something to it. <laughs> if you can keep me I want to stay here with you forever and I'd be glad Did you hear her larynx drop on and I'll be glad and I'll be glad so the larynx dropped, the throat kind of got a little more wider, the vocal track got a little more wider, retracted a little bit, almost like a yawn. And no big line. It really opened up. And that opening up really changes the timbre or the texture of one's voice. So she really does a lot of that stuff when she sings too. She'll get a little more twangy or kind of a little more belty going certain places and things like that, but then will open up as she gets lower and things like that. He's coming back to call on me. He's gonna handle me and love me. So handle me and love. You hear that? That's what I'm talking about, that throat opening, textural, vocal tract opening, retractive change that she does. Na, 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 na. So you can really play with textures and sounds of your voice besides just doing riffs and runs. You can play with how you position your vocal tract and make different sounds happen. You can play with how much of a change you do and play with the different types of textures that you can have with your voice when you sing things like that and kind of maneuver your throat and vocal tract, you know, in different ways. And then you can have different sounds and different textures come out that way. It's gonna be like dying porgy deep inside me. Deep inside me. Deep. Those lips are puckered. I always talk about that pucker with her. Deep inside me. Instead of me. You hear the difference? Me. When you puck at those lips, the sound gets more controlled and more focused, warmer, more gathered, whatever word you want to use. When you pucker those lips, that changes the shape of the vocal tract, which changes the shape of the sound. All of this is part of your vocal tract. So when you change your lip position, the sound changes. 
and that changed the sound from more of like a brighter me to a more focused, more sultry me. feel like her jaw kind of sits lower. She kind of keeps her jaw lower when she sings. You can kind of see that here. It's kind of the jaw is kind of lower and I think that warms up the sound too or kind of makes the sound darker if you will. She's really good at making darker, richer sounds with her voice. And so she kind of I miss, I miss with that lip pucker and that lowering of the jaw. That really brings a really rich timbre and texture to one's voice. She's so good at that. But she can also get bright and belty too. She can get bright, twingy, whatever. She can do all these things, but right here she's kind of getting more sultry, a little more jazzy. I miss, I miss. In the way she's singing right here. And I am never going nowhere. line right there had a pucker. Did you see the lips? They were a pucker like this a little bit. And I'm exaggerating the pucker, but it was a little pucker there. Oh, no, 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 no. And then she went up in that line right there and then switched that head voice. And in that classic Whitney run. But the pucker was still there and that jaw was a little more lowered. It was a little more like, ta, ta, ta. and I can't do it like her, but I'm trying to show you kind of what I'm seeing and hearing. So between that jaw lowering, the pucker really warms the sound, even in your head voice or your falsetto, thin folds, whatever you want to call it, even in that part of your voice, you can still have those vocal track maneuverings and vocal track manipulations, and you can still have a richer sound in that part of your voice. And I am telling you. She is singing three different styles at the same time. She went from classical, jazz, or whatever. Porgy and Bess is an opera, so it's classical in essence, but maybe she brought a jazz rendition to it, if you will, jazz rendition. So she went from that more operatic or maybe like a jazzy operatic sound to musical theater, belty, and I am telling you. And then after this, she's gonna go to I Have Nothing. These are three big songs. Three huge songs. That takes a lot of stamina and a lot of talent. I just wanna say that to show you how much vocal prowess, stamina, and talent this woman possessed to be able to sing all three of these songs. Key change or not, I don't care if the keys are different. The bottom line is she sang three huge, big songs back to back and she's doing it like it's nothing. I just wanna make sure we know how big this is doing these three songs back to back in the way she's doing it so seamlessly and smoothly and able to deliver in all three songs. Literally able to deliver in each and every song. See, you're the best man I've ever done. There's no way I can ever go. No, 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 no way. So now she's a little bit more belty, like I said before. She got a little more belt in her voice now, a little bit more thickness. And I feel like that thickness is coming from the cricoid tilting, which is a cartilage. And here you can tilt that cricoid and then bring some beefiness to your voice, kind of that thickness. So instead of a sound like, and I telling you she said and I am telling you you see how my sound kind of got thicker and that was not the best example but I'm trying to show you how my sound got thicker when I tilted that cricoid she does that so well you hear it here way more than an I loves you porg you hear a lot more beefiness in this song because this song kind of requires that kind of beefiness to sing but she's still being very Whitney about it and she's not pushing super hard she's giving that beef and that thickness but not overdoing it no, no, no. I'm staying. Every time she said the ying, it got puckered. I'm staying. I'm staying. Mm -hmm. And you, and you. 
is a growler. Let's be crystal clear. Winnie got some growls on her for real. That right there. And you. Right there. She did that on the last and you of those three. And you. And you. And you. She kind of got back more open and more thicker and beefier as she opened up to that yeah on love me. Yeah. You're gonna love me. the jaw being lower here too. She kind of has a more taller approach how she sings, period. And I think, again, that gives it to the Whitney magic of that warmth and richness that she has. That natural way she just has that richness and warmth and depth in her voice. I think some of that is that lower jaw. You can say what you want, I'm not walking out. Again, she's a growler, okay? Those false vocal folds are coming right together. Hey! And that tongue goes back just a little bit. You can say what you want, I'm not walking out. And it's that cricoid tilting right there. And I. And it was and I, not and I. Some people probably sing it like that. And I am. And more brighter and more aggressive in that way. But she's being more warm and rich, but still aggressive. And I am. Again, that jaw. And I. It's that space, that longer space. Is standing up, I would have been standing up too. Probably somewhere shouting in the aisle. Thank you! <laughs> there and you and you and you that's hard <laughs> that's hard me doing it over and over I'm like oh <laughs> I had to go from, and I am telling you, super intense and big, share my life. So she went from that big, big, big song back to that soft, heady, share. That's hard. I just want you to know how hard that is to do. And she's singing this entire song coming up. It ain't just like she's seeing the clip. She's singing this entire song, which is, again, another huge pop ballad from her. Take me forward, I am. I'll never change all my colors for you. Mm -hmm. I said, take my love. I'll never ask for too much. Just all that you are. 
oh, that you are. That little breathy and ah, oh, that you are. And she's really pacing this smartly. I have a theory for this. I may be completely incorrect, but I feel like here when she went to I have nothing, I feel like the way she's pacing it is so smart where she can take breaths and kind of regather herself. If she needed to gather herself, probably didn't need to gather herself, but in the event that she needed to gather herself, she's making each phrase kind of quick to kind of breathe. That's smart. That's really smart. It was a good way to pace herself and say, oh, let me take this moment to breathe. So I gotta keep singing. Oh, let me just breathe a little bit, get softer, get lighter, be a little airy about it. You know, I really feel like that was part of it too. And like I said, I could be completely incorrect, but I don't know. I just like that was very smart how she kind of did that and kind of brought it back, oh, breathed, paced herself, and is getting back into this last song. Everything that you do, Probably how I would sing it, honestly. But she did nowhere to hide. So that cry coid on hide was right in there. The words were very lax in execution. Nowhere to hide. It was a nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. So it's almost like the T of nowhere to hide was almost a D instead of ooh on the two. Nowhere to nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. Okay, but we know she still said nowhere to hide. Our brains can put contextual things together in our language. So a lot of times you have the permission and the recommendation to manipulate a vocal line, or manipulate words to make it the most efficient way it could be sung. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to nowhere to hide. And it's stylistic as well. So don't make me Like the back of the tongue, tongue root is in her sound. Nothing, nothing. It almost reminds me of how I used to sing when I was a classical tenor for a hot second. Nothing. It's similar to how I would approach, you know, my classical songs back in the day when I was doing that kind of stuff. But she has that nothing, that pucker. We're taught that in classical singing sometimes, is that pucker. Nothing. That tongue is kind of up and back. I feel like for her, it's kind of up and back. That root of the tongue is playing a role. It's very slight with her, but I feel like there's still kind of like this classical ring to her voice. Yeah, yeah, it's like a classical ring to her voice with the jaw, with the elongated kind of more vertical mouth shape. Nothing! And that lip pucker, yeah. If I don't So she had a cricoid tilt belt, beefy belt, heaven, you, really light head voice, thin folds, you, that register flipping she's so good at, that's what I'm talking about. So she kind of had like a more of a twangy, nah, then yeah, yeah, with the more drop and larynx, a little more open vocal track, open throat, yeah, yeah. You see through right to the heart of me. You break down my walls with the strength of Again, she went that twanging, nah, yeah, yeah, and really played with the vocal track shape as she traveled down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it kind of opened up towards the end, but still had that pucker lip, oh, open vocal track sound that I keep talking about that she has here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Passion inside. Passion inside. Yeah, it wasn't passion. Passion. Eh, eh. It's almost like she sings with like a, a German umlaut. Roll with me here, roll with me here. Just, just give me a second to explain it. So in the German language, we have sounds that are not in the English language, correct? Right. So in the German language, there is a vowel sound that I remember how to learn how to sing with when I was learning German in my singing lessons back in the day. And I remember, I think it was an umlaut. It was kind of like, eh, where the tongue was shaped like an E, but the lips were shaped like an U. I feel like she sometimes has that sound where the tongue is either floating around in the mouth or the back of the tongue, the root of the tongue is kind of maybe going back. Her tongue does play a role, in my opinion, in how she sings, which is again part of that Whitney magic, that warmth, that richness that Whitney has. The tongue does definitely play a role in how she approaches singing in this way. Ha <laughs> ha, German umlaut. But yeah, like, I, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Her body is always playing a role in how she sings too. She always has that Whitney stance. I feel like it's like a slight twist and kind of like her arms are here and it's very regal, but I feel like her body also plays a role in how she sings. Because if you notice, she doesn't do a lot of moving with her torso when she sings songs like this. She's pretty still. The mic stand is here. She's pretty still and she sings directly into that mic. And she really has a strong stance in her torso, which is where her breathing muscles are. Her supportive muscles for the voice has a very strong stance in her body in that way okay and so I also feel like those neck muscles those supportive neck muscles back in here and those torso muscles play a role in how she sings because you notice again she doesn't reach up a lot with her neck she stays pretty much here don't make me close one more time you know it's really here she doesn't do I don't wanna you know, she doesn't do a lot of that. But also, I take it a step further and I talk about this with some of my clients. I feel like when she keeps her arms out like this, I feel like she's giving herself some room to breathe in the torso, in the rib cage and everything where your lungs are, it gives her more space to take in air and kind of support in that way, you know? And I feel like she also moves her arms and hands on B. Don't make me close one more door. I don't wanna hurt anymore. You know, she kind of keeps her arms here, her hands are kind of together. She snaps, but everything is on beat. And I feel like that kinesthetic movement can also help you sing better. We all have these kinesthetic movements, these kinesthetic habits that we have. I know for me, I have like three main ones. I hit my leg a lot when I sing. I do this like head twitch. When I sing sometimes, I don't know where I got it from. If it get real good to me, I'ma swing my hair, you know, all of this and everything that I like to do when I sing. But I feel like these kinesthetic movements, number one, have to do with ourselves as artists and how we wanna sing and how we do sing. And it also gives us a way to relax and release energy and tension if we have any, because we have a kinesthetic movement that gives us something else to think about and to consider when we are singing versus kind of standing still and whatever. You know, it kind of gives us something to do, which can then help you stay relaxed when you're singing. I feel like she kind of does that. And I may be completely incorrect. She may just like to do it like that. It's just a natural habit that she had. But I feel like her stance really helped her breathing in that way and her supportive muscles and to support the high intense singing that she always has had to do. And then I feel like these kinesthetic moves, her arms, everything like that, her twists and things like that, it really was kind of on brand for her, but it really gave her a kinesthetic movement to do to stay relaxed, stay in the moment, you know, when she was singing. No, I 
interrupt it on a good note. I'm so sorry, y'all. But I wanted to talk about this real quick. You see that nothing, nothing, nothing. Again, those on-beat movements, nothing, nothing. But you see that torso did not move. It was nothing, nothing, nothing. But now you see the jaw again is nothing. And again, I'm exaggerating the lip pucker. It's not as strong as I'm making it to be. But it's there's that lip pucker and that jaw lowering. Nothing with that tongue elevated and maybe back a little bit. Again, I'm gonna be completely incorrect, but I feel like it is part of the weeding magic. <laughs> There's that twang I was talking about that she does sometimes. My arms! My arms! So she went for that twang on my arms. It kind of got back more beefy on the arms right there. And on that if you dare, if you dare, she kind of has some glissandos. If you dare! Okay, she kind of did something like that. If you dare! Which is really nice. I like that. <laughs> Nuance right there. Don't walk away from me. Don't do that. She did something like that. Where she kind of went from don't walk away from me. So the me turned into a nasal N consonant. Me. So then the N came from a na 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 to a soft D. Don't you dare. And then growled on don't you dare. Yeah. Yeah, that was a nice little thing that she did right there. Yeah, I love these little tiny quick nuances that she's so good at. Walk away from me. Diminuendo almost on the head voice flip up. And I can't do it like she did, but you heard a slight decrescendo or slight softening of the volume diminuendo a little bit. Analysis, click subscribe down below to click the alert button next to it so you know when the next video is posted. And as I will always continue to say to you, be vocally bold, creative, and aware, but most of all, be vocally you. All right, y'all, see y'all soon.